So I got a shop tip for you machine users, whether it's a Haas, uh, Doosan, Okuma, Brother, uh, Robodrill, this shop tip might actually help you extend the life of your machine just that much longer. And we're actually gonna start off, I wanna show you a little thing we did on our Haas EC400 to make it more user friendly. And it's pretty advanced, not sure it applies, but it's worth taking a look. Let's walk out to the shop floor. Okay, so we got Alex here. Alex is our mill lead. Um, we got this machine a few years ago and there was a problem, kind of a design problem, not a flaw, just a problem, maybe an oversight. Alex and our electrical engineer, Carlos, solved it. Alex, what was the problem we had with this? So the problem that we had was the machine would be running, it'd uh, bring over a pallet that would complete its part. Uh -huh. uh, the guy who was changing the parts was at the other side of the shop. So looking over here, you could see the machine running, but you couldn't tell that there was parts were going to be changed. Yeah. So looking down our aisle of machines, we're used to seeing green lights at the top of the control pendants. Well, right now this machine is running and there's a green light and these parts need to be changed. So looking from the side, there's no indication it needs to be changed. Oh, you couldn't tell, yeah. Yeah. So then you went to Carlos, what'd you tell him? Well, I told him that we needed some way to know that there's parts here waiting to be changed. And uh, his solution was coming up with the LED lights. Yeah. And not only having the lights, but different colors. Yes. So the yellow indicates that there's parts here waiting. And the machine is running, but there's parts here waiting. So that lets anybody know. And we have an angle so you can see it from both sides of the shop. Right. And that lets the operator know you need to come over here and attend to this. Yes. That way you can keep the parts uh, yeah. running. So the workflow is you you look down, if you're looking this way, you see this one. You're looking down the other way, you see that one. Boom. We went with 3D printed magnets, so it's like super user friendly. It just snaps right on. Carlos cooked up a circuit board that actually monitors this light. Yes. So I think if it sees it flashing, it interprets that as I need to turn this yellow. Yes. And then when you change parts, and press the button, this turns. Wait, it, it turns white as it's moving, and once it drops it off and it's scheduled, then it turns green and lets the operator know that these parts are, well, when the machine is running and the parts are ready to right. go. So we're used to green lights, meaning all's good. Yes. Green is money, everything's, yeah. Okay. And then, um, and it's also, uh, Carlos took it a step further. This whole circuit has its own independent power source and it's opto isolated. So it actually looks at the voltage here through an optical like decoupler. So there's no voltage exchange. It's, 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 it's good engineering. So do we like it? Do we not like it? What's the deal? Oh yeah, we like it. It's, 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 it's a, a, a great improvement that we made uh, yeah. to this machine. Yeah. One more upgrade. You may not have an EC400, but maybe you have a mill and this is a uh, improvement that we made to all of our mills. So these air guns, Typically, they're like this braided stainless steel, which is great and everything, but especially on the front of these machines, they tend to wear, um, not so much at this station, but at like under the pendant or operator station. So what did, what did we do to these? This one, we have it at the bottom because that one is actually rubbing against the machine. Yeah, this one with scraping. Yeah, we're not hitting anything on the top side because that's where you're using it and it's away from the machine, but the bottom side does rub against the machine, so you first yeah. put it where it's in contact. Right, and so this is heat shrink tubing yeah. that we just unscrewed here, ran it down, heat gun. Um, let's talk about one more upgrade we made over here. All right, so what we did here was we added the heat shrink tubing uh, on the hose, and what that's doing is preventing any of the marks on the machine. Yes. Yeah, and this is our second oldest machine, our second oldest VF2, and there's like no, no wear marks, no paint marks as opposed to the one that's like a year older and is super scratched up. And it's an easy upgrade, sir. Totally, yeah, uh-huh. Um, and there's, while we're on the topic of upgrading machine, let's talk about one more upgrade we made over here. Okay, so what what is this? Why is this here? So this is a uh, quick disconnect for our pallet system. So instead of running uh, air through the center and keeping it inside the machine, we have this. And this just also, we have it outside and we go through the door that you've pulled the parts out of. That way you can't leave it connected. 
Yeah. And you have to remove it every single time. Yeah. Now, also a problem that we're getting was chips into the off something. Into the fitting. Right. So what we did was we refit it. It's just a cap. Yeah. A little on there. And also we needed a swap for this, so we 3D fit a holder. Yeah. For the so this can go anywhere. Yeah, it can go anywhere. So you know, our yeah. biggest choice. That's awesome. And so this fitting is unique. It's a Japanese style push instant connector. So you push it, it locks on, you pull it and it unlocks and it seals it. So it's not like the one where you need to like pull it back and then release it. There's one handed operation. Yeah. So that's great. Um, yeah. Awesome. Good tips. Thanks for watching.